Great. Hello. Welcome Hi. to Four Minute Friday Fun. I'm Delaney George. And I'm Brittany Coomer. And this week we're going to talk about learning paths on its learning. All right. So learning paths are a new feature of its learning. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really played around them a whole lot, but they're kind of cool. They are cool. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah. the idea is that you can build a path or a lesson and students go through the steps. It's kind of easier for them to stay on track and not get lost yes. with links and lots just of other resources, yeah. which is great for some of those executive functioning skills. Absolutely. They can just click through things. But you can also build in different resources in the pathway, mm -hmm. so different means of representation and also different means for action and expression as well. Yes. So UDL tie-ins as always. Yes. So we're going to go through and show you how to make a learning path, and then we'll show you what it looks like on the student side of things. Perfect. Sound good? Yes. All right. So the topic for today's learning path was one I used to teach when I taught seventh mm -hmm. grade social studies, the yes. Mongol Empire, which was a fan favorite of my students because there was <laughs> blood, guts, and disease. That's which, a big yeah. deal in middle which, school. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all the fun stuff. Yeah. I personally am grossed out by that, but <laughs> that's maybe that's just me. That's okay. So if you're making a learning path, you can make it lots of different steps or as simple as you want. This mm -hmm. one's a little bit lengthier because it was basically a mirror or digital version of what I would have done in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I suggest if you're making one that you build all of your resources first. Okay. So... When you build a learning path, it's basically a collection of resources on its learning and you arrange them and then students go through those in order. So I don't, my mind works in making all of them first, not building as and I go. putting them in order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can put virtually anything in a learning path except for a hangman game or the crossword puzzle, which, which you, you know. know. <laughs> it's okay. There's other things you can do. Yes. You can use an outside website <laughs> exactly. and put that in there if you really want to. If you want it that bad. Yeah. 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 So what I did is I put all the resources that I knew I wanted in the learning path mm -hmm. um, in a folder. So I just named it that topic. Okay. You can name it learning path or whatever you want it to. And you build that like you would any resources, add button folders, and um, you can make notes, you can put in different activities. So for this one, what you'll do next is after you have everything in your folder, and they don't have to be in the order that you want them to be in for the learning path yet, you can arrange that. But you'll click the button in the corner and you'll click make learning path. And if you have any of those resources in there that can't be made into a learning path, it will tell you. So then you can mm -hmm. delete it and move forward. Mm -hmm. And now we are in the learning path builder. So I have an instructions one here. I want to keep that in that order. But if I wanted to move some of these resources around, if you click the drag and drop button, you oh, can change nice. the order there. If okay. I decide I don't want this in there anymore, I can delete it. Perfect. Yeah, so this is the builder. It's pretty simple, straightforward. You can also add steps and then arrange them in that way. So if you figure out, oh, maybe you want to add in a resource I made a while ago, mm -hmm. simple. But the thing that's really cool about this is you can build in different branches in a path by putting a mm -hmm. test or assessment into a learning path. Awesome. So for this one, it's just set up to where as soon as they finish this little check for understanding this quiz, yeah. then they move on to the next activity. Okay, perfect. But if I wanted to change this to where a student score, have to get a certain score to move on, I can do that oh. all right through here. So on this one, I'm gonna make it so they score an 80%. Mm -hmm. If they score an 80%, then they move on to the last step. If they don't score an 80, then they have a little bit of a review before they move on to the final activity. So it perfect. redirects them based on what they do. Nice. But you can also play around with a few other things. Um, you can have it to where if they score an 80, they just go right to the finish. Mm -hmm. You can build in lots of different steps. So it's a way for you to build in some additional practice for students who might need it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then also provide those who have already got it the end activity. The done. Yeah. yeah. Being so done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're ready to move. They don't need the bonus. Yes. And again, if you want to add those steps in along oh. the way, you can. So whenever you're finished with the learning path, you'll do complete... And then it doesn't turn on right away, which is kind of a good thing because I always mm -hmm. find typos after I think yes. I'm ready to go. Yes. You can always edit it anytime. Uh -huh. But when you click this button, this visible to students means that it's now active for kiddos. They okay. can start going through this pathway. Perfect. So now we'll look at it as a student. As a student. Maybe. I, get back. <laughs> I always forget. There it is. All right. So there it is. Awesome. All right. You start. Start. 
And there we go. I go through step by one. step. Yeah. The video. Oh, I know. Look I was you. a little ambitious on this one. We're so awesome. Yep. yep. And it gives you a little notification. Continue. I think so. I'm done with that step. Yes. And then my video is not working right there. But if it was, the kids would watch the it video would be and then yeah. do a discussion. Oh, cool. And it takes a little bit for it to load because it doesn't want kids to just click through everything. Click through and show that it's not done. Yeah. Yeah. But whenever they get to the assessment, students would answer the questions. Um, and if I don't get an 80%, then I'm taken to a review resource. And then after I finish the review is when Perfect. I pick on. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it looks like from the student side of things. Awesome. And here's another, I'm actually going to show you another example of a learning path as well. And it resumes the students. Oh, so it like saves their time. progress. Yeah, it okay, saves their progress perfect. as they go. Perfect. But if I was working on this one, this is a science example for an elementary student. Mm. Yeah. All right. Something about our sig yes, connection is not, like is my connection not great right today, now. but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I would watch the video and then continue you go along. To the next step. I'd say yes or no if I completed the task. Does the teacher want the student to read afterwards? Mm -hmm. I do yes. And then let me move on. Watch another video if my connection that was normally secure. Normally would come up. Uh -huh. yeah, yep. And that's how I would get through the learning path. There's Perfect. One step after that one. So this is what it looks like from the student view. And if I was Very a teacher, yeah, right? Yeah. It's super easy. If at any point in yes. time, I don't want this to be a learning path anymore. It's mm -hmm. really easy. To switch it back. I can just hide it and then I can make it back to a normal folder. Very cool. And then it makes sure. Or not it's absolutely so sure I want to do this. Yes. Yeah. So that's how you make awesome. a learning path. You just build Very your resources, cool. put them in your order. Yeah. Good to go from there. Awesome. All right. That's all we have. Perfect. Have a happy Friday. See ya.